welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. I went to the doctor the other day and she said that I needed more fiber. <laughs> so I went to the yard store. Of course I did. Oh man, am I still backed up. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have a Mikey mystery hat today. If you wanna scroll to the end of the video you can find out what it looks like but we're gonna go ahead and play it piece by piece here today. We're going to begin this. You can do a beanie version or a toque version. So beanie is kind of like wrapping to your skull. The toque has a little bit of extra and you can polish it off with a pom pom if you wish. You do have enough yarn to do this. One thing that you need to consider right off the hop if you are using the Super Saver Ombre. The color that I did use was called Blutiful and what we have here is that if you do the brim because of the transitioning of the yarn when it comes around and wraps around and then you have that connection spot. The, at the connection spot you'll notice that there's gonna be a color difference very uh, a color difference. So therefore to me that kind of bothers me a bit. So maybe I would consider doing the brim as a solid color and then bring your Super Saver Ombre to do the rest of the hat. Your call. You are the creator after all. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play and we're going to get this done. This is an adult size just roughly an average and that's where our journey is gonna begin. On camera today I will be using a Red Heart Super Saver in Ogo format. It's the same size yarn. It's just wrapped in a different format. So all you just need to do, peel back. Hear that ripping? Woohoo! Yeah, something. And just toss that into your recycling box. And then what we can do is just separate it out and you, when you pull out on the horseshoe you'll find the the item that keeps it together. This is done like this because if you've ever been to a yarn aisle and people really kind of um, go through it. It keeps everything nice together. You're snipping this and you're good to go. So you can either use the Ogo from the outside of the ball like this or the outside of the Ogo or I like to just reach in and just grab the interior and you can go either way. <laughs> so it's an either way Ogo today and let's begin the journey right now. We're gonna start our journey on page number two. We're gonna be using the horizontal bar for half double crochet. It's gonna create a rib look. We're gonna start right here. The beanie and the toque version are the same for the brim and we're going to begin with that next. So this is an intermediate level project and you're gonna create a slip knot to begin. Just create a longer tail. You are going to use that to connect to the other side of the brim once you get there. And let's create that slip knot and we're going to chain a total of 12. So let's count those together. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now you're thinking to yourself that's a really big brim. It does condense down so don't be worrying about that and we're going to begin row number one next. So let's begin row number one. We're gonna go third chain from the hook. So just count it back. So 1, 2, and 3. Turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. It will make a nicer look finish. So wrap the hook and going into the back hump of the third chain away and you're going to half double crochet. And what I need you to do is that we are going to continue along and in the back hump of each one of the chains just half double crochet all the way to the other side. So please do that now and I'll be right back in just a moment. So once you get all the way across you're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number two and we're gonna continue then with row number two until the length of the brim is established. Let's begin row number two. So we're gonna go all the way across this. You should know that the beginning of the chain two that we jumped over does not count as a stitch. Anytime we're uh, doing a chain two it's not a stitch. It's just a builder. So chain two which is not a stitch. So you're gonna go in the horizontal bar and normally when you look at crochet you can see the stitches down on the front like this. What you wanna do is you wanna play within the front bar. Do you see this one right here where my thumb is? And so when you wrap the hook you're going to slide up underneath that one. Once you get the first one you can see the remaining there and what this is doing is it's turning over the top edge so that it will have a knitted appearance. So what you're going to do is just in the horizontal bar continuing along. So let me just turn it around for you so you can see. You see how that's turning that over? That's what you're wanting. So in the horizontal bar all the way across I need you to half double crochet and I will be at the end of the line 
in just a few moments and let's just count our stitches to make sure that it's right and let's check at that point. When you get to the end of the row you're just gonna go into the last horizontal bar. We need to make sure that we can only count 10 half double crochets. So let's count those out together. So let's count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So this means that there's an, the correct number of stitches across. So what I need you to do is just turn your work and you just need to do row number two over and over and over until it measures approximately 21 inches that's slightly stretched. Okay, so um, you don't wanna just do it and lay it down. You wanna stretch it a little, a little bit so you can have that give. So to start again, you're just gonna chain two, come to the horizontal bar that's straight on down. Okay, so it's just in front and you're gonna half double crochet yourself across. So I would, just in case you're questioning life, I would question to make sure that you can count um, 10 half double crochets once in a while and you will see that using crochet that the first few rows are always a little bit looser than the rest. How you can get rid of that though is just by using a smaller hook just to start a, for a couple rows and then switch to the regular size hook if that's an issue for you. So what I want you to do is continue row number two over and over and over until your work measures approximately 21 inches and that's where I'm gonna pick you up next time and I'll be back in a few moments from now. So now we're back and when you take your tape measure it's gonna measure approximately 21 inches slightly stretched. So when it's lying down here it's not stretched. So you just wanna stretch it a little bit more. You can also just try it around your forehead and to make sure that it's gonna fit. If it's too loose you're gonna regret it. So just make sure it does have a little bit of um, give to it um, so that it can uh, really wrap to your skull nicely. So we're now going to move on in this pattern and we are going to start from the next part and we're going to join the brim together to form the circle. Let's begin to do that next. So the next part I want you to do is just pull out your crochet hook and just leave a loop. Okay, just don't go too far with that hook and you wanna grab the other side. Remember I said leave a long yarn tail. What we're going to do is that we're going to attach the brim so that it's permanently in a circle. So let's put your tapestry hook on and how we are going to attach it matters. And so let me just bring you in nice and close. So we're gonna attach the one side to the other so you're just gonna match the stitch work exactly on the other same point and then coming back across. Okay, it comes straight across. This is called a whip stitch. I believe some people call this a mattress stitch as well and you're just matching stitch to stitch as you go across and you're just gonna go just the 10 stitches over that you have. Make sure that you don't pull it too tight so that it collapses the, the brim so you wanna be taut but not too tough on it, right? And so you're going to whip stitch yourself all the way across to the other side. So we'll do that and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming to the very final stitch. I don't wanna interfere with the loop that it's coming up. We wanna make sure that stays accessible and we're just gonna come into the stitch right underneath that loop and to the final. It takes a little bit of practice when you sew but you know, like anything in life it just, you get used to it. So just pull on it and now you can just now hide this yarn. So just make sure it kind of ties itself into a little knot so it doesn't come out. And then I want you to turn it so that you're looking at the interior of the brim. So just turn it around and just come through the project and stay on the inside. The best way to hide the yarn is to just glide the needle through the stitch work on the back side. So don't let that needle hit and go through. Keep it on this side and you wanna go through one pass and when you pull on it just make sure it looks like it's the right shape for going across and then going up again through a slightly different path and then back down one more time. And now you're good to go. So now you can cut that right down to the brim and then you can put your hook back into that that loop, pull everything nice and tight and now you have the brim complete. So let's move on to the body of the hat and let's begin that journey next. So let's show you an insider secret next. We have to get 72 single crochets all the way around this thing. Now it's equally spaced and the problem is is that if you start counting and then you're not all the way back and you're at 72 and you got still like a couple inches left, you have to frog the whole thing. What I'm gonna recommend to you right where you're holding that 
fold it directly in half like this. Okay, so that the hook is on the one side and grab a spare piece of yarn or a stitch marker. You can use the same hook. You just pull it out and I want you to mark the opposite side at the halfway point. And you're gonna take this out later. But what this is going to do is that now instead of trying to guess what 72 stitches look like all the way around, what you're going to do now that you have it in half, you know that you have to get from the first part here to the stitch marker in 36 stitches. Then from once you get there, when you're coming around the other side, you're gonna go from one to 36 one more time. So therefore it allows you to, to be able to get your, your spacing correct. So when you're crocheting along, so when you, you should be about the halfway mark and but what's half of 36? I think it's 18. So you should be at 18 stitches approximately at this halfway spot and then get the other one in. So it allows you to be able to get your counts and pretty much do it the first time when you're using uh, an area up like that. So that's just something that I would do if you weren't watching me. So let's begin to try this next. So the pattern says to work 72 single crochets evenly around the edge. So this is what we're going to do. So you're gonna chain one and just coming onto the side of the edge you're just gonna single crochet. So this is considered one and try to make sure that you get at least two strands underneath that stitch. So this will be two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, And 18. So I got 18 and I'm about the halfway thing so now I just gotta get the other 18 in there. So I'm gonna continue to still count. So the next one will be 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. And I still have six more stitches left before I get to the spot. So this 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 and I'm at the stitch marker now is 36. So what I'm trying to tell you is that it's not rocket science, it's just all about math. So what I want you to do is try on your own. So if you're gonna screw up now, you at least know that you had 36 stitches before the stitch marker hit. So just jump over and count one to 36 again and you will end then at the join when you come back around. So please do the second side of this across and I will be back in just a moment. So I just verified my count off camera and I do have 72 and I'm going to join it. Now if you are doing a new color, I would change your color right at the spot, spot here. Now if there's any stitches that are quite not equal to each other, this will actually balance itself out. So don't be too afraid that you might have got one stitch closer to the other. It does actually work out. So don't you be afraid of that. We're going to continue with this. I'm still gonna continue with the same color and move on to round number, or row number two. This is now considered rows because after this we're gonna start going back and forth in the rows instead of in a circle. Let's continue to row number two next. 
to keep the slip stitching from being really obvious in this I have here chaining of two. So the chaining two is gonna act as a buffer to hide in the gapping spaces of normally that you would see in double crochet. So starting in the very first one that that's coming out of what uh, that's coming out of I want you to double crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. So a nice easy round one double crochet in each and this will also help to balance any unequal parts just in case you had that and please do that now. I'll be at back at the end of row number two and I'll see you back here in a moment. So we're coming up to the end of row number two. Now I wanna make sure that you don't add an extra stitch here. When you do um, projects and there's a slip stitch the line creates that extra piece. So you gotta make sure that we don't count that as a stitch. So just going all the way around and then slip stitch it then to the top of the first double crochet. So you're ignoring this chain two which is filling in the space and if you wanna verify that your count is still 72 that's great. Now the stitch marker that we left in can technically come out now. We don't need to see where that is. But now the story of this whole thing is going to change because now we're gonna be working in rows instead of rounds. So when we get here what I need you to do is turn your work like this and you're now going to progress to row number three. You'll notice that row number three and all alternative rounds like three, five, seven, all the alternative are always gonna be the same with just one single crochet in each of the stitches. So let's talk about the third round and alternative rounds next. So now that we've already have it turned we have to look to where our first stitch is. So we're just gonna chain up one and do you see where the first stitch is? I'll hold. You show me where. Is it this one or this one? It's this one. This is where you're coming out of. So you're going to stick your hook in the top of that first one and all you're gonna do in the alternative rounds is nice and simple one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. This is going to act as a backdrop to the cable work that will be coming up next. And so every time there's an alternative round you're gonna turn your project and do one single crochet back always. Even when we're decreasing at the top of the hat the same thing. So please go all the way around for round number three. I'll be back in just a moment. So coming all the way back around you need to know how to identify the very last stitch. Can you tell me which one it is? Can you tell me which one it is? I'm currently on the last stitch. This here the chain two builder is not included. So then therefore you slip stitch it. See it's pulled everything together. Turn your work and now we're going to begin rows number four, five, six and seven which is the repeat pattern throughout the whole body of the hat. Let's do that next. So rows number four we're going to be working with the row two rows below. So we're gonna be working with the double crochets that are down here. And so we're going to create cable work then that is a really nice easy cable work for you to do. You're going to chain one. That's nothing. That's just a builder. But what I need you to do after you get that one done is that you need to come straight on down and do the first double crochet. This is the chain two. Do you see that? You're gonna do this one. It's the first post. And you're gonna keep that as a front post double crochet. So come on down and come into the side of the post and back out. I have everything designed so you're staying on the front side so you don't have to manipulate your mind. And just do a front post double crochet. So now we're going to work with the next three stitches. You're gonna first skip the stitch here and you're gonna work with these two. So think of these two as best friends. So what you have to do is you have to skip the third friend and go to the two best friends first. So you're gonna skip and you're gonna do a front post treble after the one that's skipped. And this is gonna cause it to lean over. Then you're going to do its best friend. It's always gonna be the same. See how they're leaning over? And now you're going to do a front post treble around the third friend that's by itself, by themselves to bring them together so they can do a hug. So you're gonna wrap the yarn twice and come into the one you skipped. And do a front post treble. So this last one here that's doing a hug is going to create a rolling effect of, of cabling. So now you're gonna just do the repeat pattern for the remaining of number four. So the first one is gonna be a one front post double crochet around the next one. 
and now you got your three friends. You're gonna skip the first friend and you're gonna work with the two buddies and you're going to treble in the front post both of those and then we can't forget about our third friend that we've skipped. We're gonna give them a hug and we're gonna wrap that and come into the one we skipped and do a treble around it and so then that third stitch hugs it to give it that look. Okay one more time so you, the next one is gonna be a front post a double crochet to go down. You got three. You're gonna skip over the first one and you'll treble front post the two friends and then the third one is gonna give a hug over top. I need you to do this all the way around. This is round number four and you will see the cabling work starting before your very own eyes. So I'm coming back around. I can see that I have three posts left and that makes sense to me because the first one was a double crochet straight on down. So right currently I'm sitting on a double crochet straight on down. That means that there's only three left. So skipping over the first friend, put the with the two buddies and then let's give those two buddies a hug with the third friend. And when you're done that you should have the same number of stitches so it should work out. So I want you to join it to the top of the first front post double crochet like that and you will see the texturing is happening. So remember what I said about the alternative rows. So we're now going to turn our work and do row number five. So you'll notice in the instructions it jumps from four to six. This is an alternative row. So you're just going to chain one and coming straight on in. Do you see where to go? The, you're sitting on the front post double now. So you're gonna go into that stitch and then into all the other stitches all the way. This helps stabilize the stitches and creates a backdrop so that the hat is not uh, transparent. It also thickens up the yarn as well so that the hat is warmer. So do this for row number five and I'll be right back in just a moment and I'll take you through number six shortly. So I'm just coming to my very end here. See this is the chain one so I don't wanna use that and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. And now we're gonna turn our work back and now we're going to go on to row number six. Row number six you're gonna love it. It's nice and simple. Let's begin. So let's begin round number six. I want you to chain one. It's a builder so it's nothing. Come straight on down. You're gonna see how the groups are together. This is creating a rolling look and see how these three belong to get together and then these front post double crochets down here they're gonna stay on their own. So you're gonna start in front post double crochet around the other front post double crochet right directly below. You're applying the same stitch all the way around. It's the front post double crochet. But now here's the trebles. Come on straight on down and when you're doing that it's going to cause the cabling to have a rolling look and that's why there's a tidal wave in the pattern itself. This is a, a rolling wave. Okay once you get that group in a three done continue just around. So you don't need to count. You just gotta apply one front post double crochet around each of the posts two rows below and that's all you gotta do. And you'll see how things will stay grouped together as we keep moving in this pattern. Continue with round number six. So I'm coming up to the end of round number six and you're looking at to the stitch work that you have. Remember that you started with the front post double here and this is the builder so ignore it and just come on reach on over to the front post double crochet and that was round number six. So now number seven you're gonna turn your work. This is part of the repeat. Chain up one. It's the alternative and coming out of the first one just do one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So do that. I'll be right back in a moment and we'll talk about the repeat and then you can do that on your own and then I'll meet you as we do the top of the hat section after that. I'll be right back. So I'm coming back around. Can I give you a little tip? You don't gotta worry about counting these single crochets. These single crochets just sit in behind the work. You're just looking for that cable work going forward. So once you come all the way around you're just gonna join it to the first one and then turn your work. You're then going to begin rounds number four through seven one more time if you're doing the beanie and then two more, two more times if you're doing the toque and you're going to see the rolling of this effect happening. So I'm gonna just show you again just starting off with run, run, round number four as you begin all over again. Let's begin to do that next. 
So for the beanie version you're gonna do rounds number four, or rows number four through seven just one more time. Toque version which I'm doing is going to be rows number four through seven two more times. Let me just confirm on getting you restarted then with these rows. So to begin number four if you go back to the instruction you're gonna chain up one. Now this one here the front post double crochet you're gonna keep that as going as a front post double crochet straight down. And now the next three are going to be your friends again. You're gonna skip the first friend and go to the two buddies and you're going to do a front post treble around both of those. So one for each and then you're gonna come back to the friend that you skipped and give it a hug with a front post treble to overlap that and then you're really gonna start seeing the tidal wave of this cable go. Do you see it? Now the next one here is straight on down front post double crochet. So it's already what you know. The only difference is this time is that you are playing with the cabling work here and it's giving a bit different visual but that's the whole point. So let's do one more cable. So you're just gonna skip the first one, do a front post treble around the next two and then give it a hug with a front post treble around the one that you skipped. Everything is in sets of three. Just always remember that. And then the next one is a front post double crochet straight on down. So please do this. This is the start of round number four but please do rounds four through seven one more time for beanie or two more times for the toque and I'll be right back after we get that done. I'll be back in a moment. So now we're back. I've done the repeat a total two more times because I'm making a toque format. I also tried it on. It fits fabulously. So now we're gonna start closing it off on the top. So in the pattern we're working on the top of the hat and you're going to pick up for the beanie version or the toque version at the same spot. So it's the same ending on how you're gonna do it. So what I need you to uh, realize is that we are going to be eliminating out stitches uh, in this particular part of it but when we do the alternative like that's the, the single crochet that's always gonna be the same. So we're going to narrow and then do the alternative to kind of fill it in and then narrow it again and etc. So we're going to do what is called as a DCTRTOGFP. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. And what this is is that we want to start eliminating stitches but we're wanting to do it so that we keep the look of the cabling consistent right to the top. So this is where people are getting most confused currently in the pattern from what I saw online. So let's start when we're gonna do uh, the first row we should be looking at the right side of the work. So we're gonna be doing that and that's where our journey begins right next. So let's begin the first round. What I want to explain to you is that how you do the stitch is actually in the abbreviation section and what you have to be conscientious of is that we wanna maintain this look but we wanna maintain it in an equal manner. So here's without getting it too fluffy for you. Here's what you're going to do. You're gonna chain up one. You're going to put the first double crochet that comes straight on down and the second one of the braid together as one stitch. Now the one that comes on straight on down is a double crochet. The other one to reach over to it is a treble. So this is classified as a special stitch that what I'm referring to as the DC TR TOG FP. That's short for double crochet, treble, front post, together. So let's just show you. So you're gonna wrap the hook and come on straight on down. Pull through, pull through two and hold. Now you're gonna skip over the first one and come to the second one and you're gonna wrap the hook twice and you're gonna come into that one and place in your stitch like you normally would have done before. The only difference is, is that you never finish the first stitch so that you can bring it together as it's one stitch. So you pull through all three. I will demonstrate this two more times. So now you'll treble into the next one after it and then we need, still need to give this a hug and when we do the hug it's the one that you're skipping. So you already know how to do that. So treble in the front post here and that's what we're gonna repeat. So the reason why I'm doing it like this because it sounds complicated is that we don't want any gaps in the hat. So let's do the next one. We wanna do the first one that comes on straight and the second one over here. So we're gonna skip that, that one here. So come on down and you're gonna do a front post double but you don't wanna finish it. Then you're gonna skip the next one and do a front post treble around the second one over. And now that you have three loops you can pull through all three and the two just became one. You're going to treble into the next one 
and then you're gonna treble into the one that you skipped. It's kind of buried in there and this is creating a nice condensed look but also eliminating stitches out. I'll show you one more time. So starting in next section, start to do your front post double but don't you finish it. Then do a front post treble in the second one over and then bring it together as one and then treble into the next and then give it a hug with the front post treble around the one you skipped. I need you to repeat this all the way around. This is the first round and you will notice that we're gonna eliminate stitches and it'll be a gay old time. Let's continue to round number one or first row and I'll be back here in just a moment. So I'm just coming all the way around and hopefully that made some sense to you <laughs> and you're going to join it to the very beginning of that special stitch and you're gonna pull it over so don't be scared that oh my god there's a lot of space it'll go together just pull it together. Now we're gonna go to an alternative round next and we're gonna turn our work and do row number two and just chain up on and do one single crochet in each. Again this is the backdrop that holds those um, holes from appearing. Please do that all the way around. This is round number two. Okay so now that we come all the way back around you're going to join it and turn and let's do round number three. Round number three. We are going to do a decrease but we're gonna come on straight on down um, and we're not gonna be doing these crossing overs because it's not called for it yet. So you just chain up a total of one and you're gonna double crochet in each of the next four coming straight on down. Now the first one is that special together stitch so make sure that you go behind that whole piece and so you do that one. So you're gonna say one and then you'll do the next one, two and the next one is three and then the next one is four. Now this fourth one it is just keep an eye on those special ones. You gotta keep it together so there's four in a row. Now you're going to do a double crochet front post two together. So the next two stitches are gonna become together. So you wrap and come into the next stitch on the front side, pull through, pull through two hold and then do the next one. Pull through two and hold and then put those together. There's a method to the madness my friends. So let's just repeat this one more time. So you're gonna put the next four as a front post double. So you have one, two, three, and four and then the next two are together. And I need you to do that all the way around for round number three and I'll be back in just a moment. So coming up to the end of number three, the last two stitches are a two together. So it's two together front post double crochet and then that will conclude that off and you're going to join to the top of the first front post double crochet. Turn your work and we're gonna do an alternative round which is just a single crochet. So just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way around and this will be round number four. I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm just coming all the way around. Just join it, turn your work and let's begin the fifth row next. So we're gonna do the decrease like we already know it to be and it's gonna get nicer and nicer as we go. So we're no longer gonna be worrying about the whole rolling over of the cables. It's gonna look good. You gotta trust in me. So do you trust me? Who knows. You're gonna chain up one and now you're gonna do a front post double crochet around the next three right below. So just do those three in a row. So we're gonna do one, two, and three and now you're going to put the next two together. So just watch the one that are sharing the same stitch that's considered one when it's up here. So the next two are together. So it's a front post double crochet two together. Okay so then the repeat is that the next three are by themselves. We have one, two and three and then the next two are together. You're gonna notice the consistency on how the stitches land. It always is gonna look the same so it kinda helps you for orientation. So please do this all the way around. This is round number five. So I've now just come all the way back around and I'm just going to slip stitch it to the top of the first front post double crochet. You're gonna turn your work and let's do an alternative round which is just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. Please do that and I'll be right back in just a moment. 
coming around to the end of number six you're just gonna join it and let's turn your work and begin number seven. We're gonna do a decrease once again. Let's begin number seven. So hopefully you're getting into the groove and you understand it. So you're just gonna chain up one and you were going to do one double crochet front post in the next two stitches. So straight on down just do the next two in a row and then you're gonna apply uh, double crochet front post two together over the next two. Okay, so the repeat pattern is, is that there's gonna be two in a row. So we have one and two and then two together. Please do this all the way around. This is round number seven. So when you come back around to number seven you're just finishing it off just joining it to the top of the first and then we're back to an alternative round number eight. You know the trick by now. Chain one and one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I'll be right back in just a moment. So when you're coming back around on number eight you're just going to just join it and let's keep things nice and tight and turn your work and let's do the ninth row and let's do that next. So let's do the ninth row. We are going to chain up one. We're going to do more decreasing. We're almost done so that you know just grin and bear it. So just come on straight on down and do the front post double crochet and then you wanna put the next two together. That's all the ninth round is. Okay, so you're gonna repeat the next ones by itself are front post double crochet and then the next two are together. So please do this all the way around. This is round number nine and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming up around the ninth round you're just going to join it to the first front post double and you're gonna turn your work and we're doing another alternative round. So the hole's getting smaller as you can see. So the alternative is just chain one, one single round in each. This is the tenth round. I'll be back in just a moment. So coming all the way back around and you're just going to join it to the first single crochet you started with. Let's turn our work and do the final round number eleven and this is gonna be the end of the journey. Let's continue to eleven next. Let's begin round number eleven. This is your final round. Just chain up one and you're just going to apply the next two together. So straight on down, pick it up and then don't finish it and then do the next one and put those together. Okay and that's all you're gonna do. So it's basically front post two together the entire time using your double crochet. So it's gonna leave you a hole at the end and we'll talk about the hole in just a few moments from now. So please continue this around for round number the 11, uh, round number 11. So I'm coming up all the way around and I've just done my last one and now I'm gonna join it and you're left with a hole that's in the top which is fine. But what I need you to do, see the hole? How can you not see the hole? It's right in front of you. So we're gonna leave an extra long tail and I want to use that tail to collect it to close the hole. So just pull the yarn through and let's get our tapestry needle and let's have a fun time doing that. So let's close this hole. So I have this uh, fascination with pulling my hole and, and pulling it all together at the same time because it makes me feel good. So I'm just gonna collect all the stitches that are in the top of the hole. So like a clothesline essentially and I'm just going around each and by pulling it all at the same time it not only makes me feel good but it actually makes the hole uh, condensed together at the same time. So I like to go past my hole a little bit. Okay so I'm back to here. So what I'm gonna do is just pinch <laughs> I'm gonna pinch uh, the strands so that I can pull my hole shut. <laughs> and look at that, nice and tight. Oh. And now once it's pulled tight like that, you're going to just secure the strand and to create a little knot. And then I want you to stick the yarn strand down through the top of the hat and carefully or sorry the tapestry needle through and just bring it to the inside of the hat. And pull it nice and tight. So the inside of the hat looks like a beehive. So if you're into beehives you can have that look too. So I wanna secure this strand on the inside of the, of the hat so that it cannot be seen. So I'm just tying it onto the inside. So you have to decide whether you're gonna do a pom pom or not. I might just do a, an artificial pre-made one because it's, it's faster but I actually have one that matches this design. 
So once you're happy with how it's secured, just taking it through some of the yarn strands on the inside of the hat, pass it through a total of three times. So back and forth three times and it should never fall out on you. It is a wearable, you may be washing this as well. And so if you would like a, a beehive hat, you got one for you. You can, it's a reversible hat. Mystery! So you got a mystery like that or you can go to this the way that it's meant to be with the cabling here. So let's just uh, show you an alternative with here that I'm gonna do with my uh, pom pom and you can stretch it out and begin that next. So I'm gonna go with an artificial pom pom. You can make a real pom pom if you want to with your yarn. You have enough of the yogo. So this is the what's left. You see it's quite a bit left. So you can go either way. I just think it might be kind of fun. And so this is a pre-made one. So I wanna take a sharp needle and this um, is where the bottom is and I'm gonna go through the ball itself. I can feel it going through the material. This is a pre-made one. I got it at Michael's just in case you're interested to know that. So I'm gonna pull through. I then want to change the yarn, uh, sorry to change the yarn off that and I wanna grab my crochet hook and I wanna pop out my hook through the top. Not directly in the middle but just off to the one side and take the one strand and pull it through. Don't be afraid to use your fingers. Once you pull the loop through, I'm using my fingers. See, told you. So now I wanna stick my hook back up and go to the opposite side of the hole at the top and so therefore this will counterbalance it in the center of the hat and grab the other yarn strand and pull that through. And if you wanna secure it more, it's great. Now here's the thing, not everybody loves the pom-pom. So it's nice to give those choices and some, and if it's a pre, or sorry, if it's a pom-pom that you made yourself, you know those are kinda hard to wash. So the secret to the pom-pom is to have it so it's removable. So I'm gonna pull it straight on down. So you're gonna open it up and these yarn strands are way too long now. So I'm just gonna cut them down a little bit and I'm going to tie it into a bow tie on the inside of the hat. Therefore if you're ever selling it at a craft show and somebody says they don't like the pom pom, <laughs> just reach under the hat and undo the bow tie and say there you go, there's the hat without the pom pom. Uh, so some people in craft shows, they provide the pom pom that's ready to be applied to the hat and once you have it onto the hat, you can determine how much strand you're gonna leave on. So if you ever have to wash the hat, you can just undo the, the, the bow tie but then here you have the pom pom and it's ready to go on the top of your hat. So it's good to go and the seam line, it's a little bit there. It's like any hat really and you just wanna give it a good stretch. Try it on and enjoy your new fabulous hat. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.